Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of this new series about data. In this series, we'll talk about fetching data from various sources like Google Sheets, Google Analytics, Search Console, MySQL, MongoDB and many others and how to perform various operations on them. We'll also learn how to create a beautiful and interesting data visualizations. I am Michal from mdbootstrap.com and I am really excited about these videos because the topic of data visualizations is especially close to me. By the way, if you want to support the creation of this series, give a thumbs up to this video and leave us a comment. If we see that this topic interests you, we will create more videos like this. And of course, if you want to be informed when we will be releasing another video on working with data, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And now, without further ado, let's get started. During our work with data, we will use a free library Easy Data. Easy Data is a new project built by MDB team and is actually a small plugin, but it will significantly facilitate our work with Google tools and other data sources. If you want to support the development of Easy Data project, give it a star on GitHub. We will be very happy to see it growing. In this video, we will learn how to use Google Sheets as a quasi database. We'll fetch the data from the spreadsheet and display it in HTML table. You can see that when we change the data in our sheet, so for example, let's change Anna to, let's say, Mark. After refreshing the browser, the data in our HTML table will be updated. So instead of Anna, we have Mark here. We can also add another row here. or another column. And with every update of our Google Sheet, our HTML table will be updated. Let's start with downloading Easy Data plugin. Go to easydata.mdbgo.io, you will find a link in the description and click on the download button. Then choose Google Sheets example. So we will use the easiest way to install Easy Data by downloading a zip package, but if you want, you can also use npm installation or clone GitHub repository. Now unzip the package and open it in your code editor. I am using Visual Studio Code. One important note, to be able to fetch and display data from Google Sheets locally on your computer, you will need Live Server plugin. So if you want to do exactly like I did in this tutorial, you should use the same editor, Visual Studio Code. To install Live Server plugin, click View, Extensions and type Live Server. Then click it and install it. I already have Live Server installed in my Visual Studio Code, so I will not do it again. And then go back to your files, click index.html and click open with Live Server. It will open new tab in your browser and now if you edit anything in your code, your browser will be automatically refreshing so you don't need to refresh it manually every time so it's another benefit of using live server extension and we need it of course for this tutorial because without this we cannot fetch and display data from google tools to fetch the data from any google tools like google sheets in our case we need to create a project on google cloud platform so go to consolecloudgoogle.com you will find the link in the description and click select the project here and then click new project. Now type a name for your project. And click create. Next click select project. And now we'll need to create 
and authentication for this app. In the sidebar on the left, click API and Services and Credentials. Then make sure that your app is selected here. So in my case, it's Google Sheets Tutorial because this is the name I choose for this project and then click Create Credentials. And we'll create API key here. So we can copy this and close the tab. And the last thing we need to do is to enable Google Sheets API for our app. So let's click Dashboard. And then enable APIs and services. Let's type Google Sheets. Let's click it and click Enable. All right, that's it for Google Cloud Platform. Now it's time to create our sheet. So let's type sheet new in a browser and let's name it tutorial sheet. Of course, you can name it whatever you want. And then let's type some data. Next, click file and click share and publish to the web. Next, click this green button publish and confirm and now let's resize this and now we'll need two things here our API key that we generated in Google Cloud Platform and the spreadsheet ID but before we fill up these fields let me explain how exactly easy data works so what we exactly have downloaded from uh, easy data website. But first let me close this sidebar here so the code is better visible. And let's start from the top. So easy data help us in two things. First of all, in the easy fetching and rendering of data from sources like Google Sheets, Google Analytics or Search Console. Secondly, easy data includes MDB UI kit which helps us create beautiful data visualizations. So inside of index.html of easy data zip package we can see here from the top font awesome which is a useful library of useful icons google fonts and the most important mdb ui kit css then below we have some dummy navigation here so here you can find some useful links but you can easily remove this if you don't need this. And then inside of the main section, we have our table. And inside of this table, we'll generate our data. So here we have an ID for our table head and table body. Now, in the script section, we can see we have MDBJS here, which is a basically JavaScript for MDB kit to make it work properly. And then we have Google API and EasyData.js. So these two files, Google API and EasyData.js, are necessary for this project to work properly. So anytime you want to fetch and display data in your web project, you need to include these two files. MDB UI kit, that means MDBJS and MDB CSS, are not necessary for this project to work properly but it will make it looks much nicer so i strongly recommend you to use it but if you don't need it you can remove these files now this short javascript snippet is a place where we put our api key and id of our spreadsheet then as you can see it fetches a data from our sheet and create an html table using id that we provided before in our HTML, so table head and table body that we used here in our HTML. Now let's see if it works. Let's go back to Google Cloud Platform and in APIs and Services click Credentials. Then click API key that we've created before. 
and let's copy API key. Then let's paste it here. And then let's go back to our tutorial sheet. And here is one more thing that we need to do. Click File and click Share and click Share with others. And then let's change it that anyone on the internet with this link can view it. So let's change it and click Done. Then let's copy the ID of the sheet, so it's this part of the link. And let's paste it to our spreadsheet ID. Let's paste it and let's see if it works. And yes, it does. So, if we change this to Michal, let's see if it update the data. And yes, it does. So let's make this table look a bit nicer, because right now the first row act as it was a table head. So let me move this a bit lower and let's type here name, age and email. And right now it definitely looks better because the first row is a head of the table with a name for each column and the rest of the data looks like a regular data. And thanks to MDB we can also play a bit with a table itself. So for example if we use class like table strip we can have a strip table or we can use something like table hover that every row on hover will be highlighted and there are so many options so if you want to learn more about MDB UI kit go to mdbootstrap.com and you can type table in the search box and here you can find all the available options for the table but uh, MDB is definitely much more than a table so feel free to explore it and to find all the amazing options for data visualizations. By the way, did you know that thanks to MD Bootstrap you can use free hosting for your projects? We call it MDB Go and it's really great. Visit mdbgo.com for more information. In the description of this video you'll also find a link to the detailed tutorial on how to use MDB Go hosting and how to install MDB CLI which is a fantastic and free supporting tool that provides many useful functionalities. Now, let me just show you how easy it is to publish our newly created project on the internet thanks to MDB Go. I already have MDB CLI installed on my computer, so now all I need to do is to run my terminal and then I need to enter the path of the project I want to upload. So here is the directory where we have downloaded the MDB package and where we have been working during this tutorial. So let me just copy this path and let's enter this. And now I need to type only a single command MDB publish and I will choose npm package manager and then all I need to do is to choose a name for my project. I will name it easy data tutorial. And after a few seconds, my project is available at this link. So let's see if it works. And yes, it does. Super fast and super useful. And that's it for this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. It will help us grow and create more valuable tutorials for you in the future. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.